Hi, I'm David Bush. Welcome back to Bush History. This is part of my ongoing series looking at the presidential administrations. These are short snippets about each of the president's administrations and the events that happened during them. There's not a lot of great depth and detail in a discussion of the events. If you'd like more depth and detail, go to my website, www.bushhistory.net, and you'll get a lot more information about any of these things that I'm talking about in these videos. Anyway, right now, let's take a look at Ulysses S. Grant. Ulysses S. Grant, the 18th president of the United States. His he was number 18. His vice president was Shiler Colfax. I've always liked that name for some reason. I'm not really sure why. He is a Republican. His term of office, 1869 to 1877, so he served two terms. He, uh, if you think about it, we have to go all the way back to Andrew Jackson to get us a two-term president, a complete two-term president. So it's been a long time. Who came before him and after him? What were their political parties? Andrew Johnson was a Democrat, came before him, and Rutherford B. Hayes was a Republican who followed him. Are there any unusual circumstances surrounding his ascent to the presidency? Uh, not a ton. Andrew Johnson certainly was disgraced, and Ulysses S. Grant was looked at a war hero, and we certainly like our war heroes in the United States history. So that's largely what gets him elected to the presidency. The electors, U.S. Grant, 214, Horatio Seymour, 80. Are there any catchphrases or terms specifically associated with him? Blood and guts Grant and never retreat Grant. And both of those come from the Civil War where he vowed to follow Lee wherever he went. He was going to follow Lee and he was going to do whatever he could to defeat him. When he left office, choice, defeat, natural death, he served two terms and he simply figured that, that was enough. No president has served more than two terms yet. That is going to come for sure, but it hasn't happened and Grant had simply had enough. Domestic issues and events. Well, the Grant administration was wrought with fraud and deceit and conspiracy and scandal, for sure. There's a lot that happens while he's president of the United States. Most people think Grant was a clean guy, but it seems like the people around him were a bunch of hoodlums. Let's take a look at what we have here. We have the Transcontinental Railroad completed, certainly in 1869, no scandal there. But with the Black Friday gold scandal with James Fiss and Jay Gould, they tried to manipulate the price of gold. They tried to drive up the price of gold, and then what they were going to do is sell it. Sell it, and that would drive it down. When Grant found out they were doing this, he had the Federal Reserve, not the Federal Reserve, I'm sorry, he had the Federal Government start to flood the market with government gold. And that started to drive the price down before Gould and Fisk could actually achieve what they'd wanted to achieve. We have the 15th Amendment. Remember, the 13th Amendment is freeing slaves. 14th Amendment is making slaves citizens. Basically, it's called the Equal Protection Amendment. And 15th Amendment is going to allow them the right to vote, allow all male slaves, more former male slaves, the right to vote. In 1870 and 1871, we have the force bills. And that's basically the idea, once again, of keeping the military in the South and forcing them to comply with the Republican legislation of the day. In 1872, we have the Credit Mobile Year scandal uncovered. And that was the idea that the railroad was creating dummy corporations that would go out of business so they could keep federal loans as opposing to have to pay them back. We have the Panic of 1873. Panics are basically bank failures. And this is starting to get into the whole idea of gold and silver and financing in the United States government. We have the delinquent tax scandal. This is with Secretary William Richardson and John Sandberg. The delinquent sca tax scandal had to do with alcohol taxes and the fact that these taxes were being deferred and moved around and 50% was being paid as commission to try to get this money back into the federal government. 1875, we have the whiskey ring. And just like it says here, federal officials were diverting tax dollars and they were getting rich off of this. We have the Specie Act, gold replaced currency going all the way back to the Legal Tender Act during the Civil War. In 1876, we have the Belknap bribery. Secretary of War William Belknap was taking bribes from traders from Indian posts. They were getting preferential places out west to trade. Uh, admitted to the Union at the time was Colorado in 1876. So we have the foreign policy and events of Ulysses S. Grant. The Treaty of Washington in 1871, basically it has to do with the fact that the Confederacy damaged Union ships in British ports, and the British, port, the British government should have been protecting these Union ships. So in order to make it up to the federal government, they paid us $15.5 million. 
So here we are at the end of the Grant administration. His administration was wrought with scandal. That there's no doubt, although no one ever connected it directly to U.S. Grant. And certainly there were significant accomplishments. Reconstruction continued, and that's a debate whether some people call it restoration, reconstruction, rejuvenation, whatever the case you want. But the railroad was completed which is really the big thing, and the East and the West part of the United States are actually finally connected. So anyway, for now, I'm David Bush, and this is Bush History, and we'll see you again. Have a great day.